My name is Alex Pennington, and we are the Aspiring Writers United. Today, I am discussing with you a really good book. This book is Jordan Peterson's 12 Rules for Life, but particularly, I'm going to be discussing with you his first rule in a series of videos. His first rule is to stand up straight with your shoulders back. And no, this is not a commentary on how you should stand with proper posture. This is how you should face life. His most famous example for this is with lobsters. Lobsters are the perfect representation of what he calls the dominance hierarchy. This hierarchy is basically about who is, I wouldn't say the alpha, but it's about who has the resources, who's the biggest and strongest. This hierarchy is about who is at the top of the food chain. And you might be wondering to yourself, well, what, what constitutes this? And it's quite simple. Who's the biggest and strongest? Who's the most social and popular? Who has the resources? Who has the land? If you are a lobster, this will be about who gets the mates. Who ha in real life, this will be who has the best dating life. Which lobster has the best land? Which lobster wins the fights against the other lobsters? The reason lobsters are used is because their brains are very similar to ours, especially when it comes to dopamine. Basically, when a lobster continues to win many fights, when it starts to have success, it becomes more confident, more dominant. People are the same way. When you start having success in life, you become more successful. It's not that you're going to become more successful and become less successful. It's that you get better and better. But the adverse is true. When you start losing, things get worse and worse. It's really easy to get a downhill snowball effect. And so one thing Peterson talks about is you need to figure out what are some of the things in your life that you could do better. Where are your weak points? Personally, I like to break this up into four sectors. Your physical appearance, your mental faculties, your relationships, and your work. When it comes to physical appearance, I'm not just talking about your face. I'm talking about how healthy are you? How fit are you? Could you go to the gym more? Could you be more muscular? The reason I think this is important is because if you look in the mirror and are not happy with what you're seeing, you're not going to be that confident about yourself. You're going to have the chip on your shoulder that goes, wow, I'm not that good looking. And it's going to be something that really weighs you down. What's interesting, though, is that it's something that you can easily work on. And what I mean by this is that, no, I'm not saying, hey, go get a gym membership this minute and go to the gym every single day. That's not realistic. But what I am saying is that maybe you could start somewhere. Maybe when you wake up tomorrow, you could do some crunches. You could do a couple push-ups. And if we got really crazy, maybe you could do some cardio. Or maybe less than that. Maybe you could eat less junk food. Maybe you could clean up your diet just a little bit. Really, one thing Jordan Pearson talks about is that it's all about these small steps. You don't need to go from point A to point B overnight. You don't need to even get a gym membership. You just need to say, man, what is one thing I could do that would make me a little bit better looking? That would make me be a little bit more healthier? And do that. And then the next day, ask yourself the same question. What's something I could do that would make me a little more healthy? What's something that would make me maybe just in a bit better condition? You can always be improving. The next quadrant is mental. And really what I mean by this is, when is the last time you learned something? How do you actually spend your days? When you get home after work, are you plopping down and watching television for hours? Or are you doing something that will actually contribute to your goals in life? And that is something I highly encourage you to think about is, what is your goal in life? Is there something that you want? Do you want to be better at something? Figure that out. I can guarantee you there are books on it. I mean, if you say to yourself, 
I want to be really good at stocks and I want to make a lot of money in the stock market. There are hundreds, there are thousands of books on this topic and so many online resources. What if you dedicated an hour of every afternoon just reading stock stuff? How much better would you become at this in a month, in two months? How much better would you become in a week? My third quadrant is your relationships. And this can be romantic relationships or it could even be social ones. Are there things in your life with people that you could make better? Do you have issues? Are there some problems? Are there ways you could maybe make your relationship with your friend a little bit better tomorrow than it is today? When is the last time you went and got coffee with someone? You know, it might seem like it's a small thing, but you are the average of the 10 people you hang out with most. If you have a bunch of negative issues with people, you're going to be a more negative person. And that's not something you want to be. You probably want to be somebody positive who people like to be around. And so see what you can do to actually improve these relationships. Probably won't be easy, but it will be worth it. And my fourth quadrant is your work. And this goes into the topic of resources. I think it's really unhealthy for people to hate their job. Now, I specifically use the word hate because you're probably not going to like your job. That's reality. But you shouldn't hate it. You shouldn't hate getting up at 8 o'clock in the morning and going to work. Well, probably 6 o'clock. But it's not something that you should dread. You're spending the majority of your life there. You should at least be able to tolerate it and have some good days. And you can tell the difference between people who like their work and hate it. You know, again, you're not going to love it. I don't think that you can do any job every single day for a long time and still enjoy it. I think almost every job eventually grates on you to the point where you're like, I really never want to do this ever again. And so what you need to figure out is, what can I do that I won't hate, that won't have me just acting like I just want to die and I'm miserable? And what can give you more money? Maybe there's a raise that you could ask about. And that's hard to do. It's not easy to confront your boss and say, hey, I want a raise. But it is worth it. You need to be able to stand up for yourself and say, hey, I deserve more money. And ultimately, you're going to work because you want money. If they weren't offering you money, you wouldn't be there. I can guarantee it. And so figure out, what can I do? And you know what? Maybe you need to switch jobs. That's okay. Go do some interviews. It doesn't hurt to go and check out the market. Go do five interviews. And maybe you come back to your boss and say, hey, I really have not been enjoying my position here. I feel like I am underappreciated. These other companies are offering me this much money. What can you offer me to stay? That's a good strategy. That's a really good plan. And it honestly, it makes you feel valued. I mean, if you have, say, 10 companies willing to pick you up as an employee, that is some pretty impressive leverage. And that really makes you feel appreciated, like you're valued. You have value in the marketplace. So what you need to do is ask yourself, how can I be a better person and climb the dominance hierarchy? Because you know who people are at the top. And I'm not talking about Bill Gates. When you walk into a room, you automatically make judgments about everyone there. This person, they seem popular, they're pretty good looking, people seem to revolve around them, they're probably higher up. This person over here, not a lot of people are talking to him. He seems a little more shy, they don't seem that confident, maybe they're slouching over, you know, really got a bend in their back. You can tell these things. And I'm not saying to make snap judgments about people, but we do. The first thing that you recognize about somebody is how they dress. And the second is what they actually look like. You know, you can be the most handsome person ever, but if you're dressed really bad, you got stains on your shirt and you're just not looking that great, people are going to judge you for that. And they're going to pick up on that. 
So just ask yourself, what can I do? How can I be a little smarter tomorrow? How can I be a little more physically attractive tomorrow? How can my relationships be a little bit better? And how can I put myself in a better position career-wise? If you do any one of those things, because you probably won't be able to do all four every single day, but if you can do one of them every day, just a small, a small exercise to get yourself better, just something that puts you a little bit better tomorrow than you were today, your life will be completely different in a year. I can promise you. Thank you all for listening. And please, comment below. How do you climb the dominance hierarchy? What are some things that you do in your own life that actually helps you become a better person tomorrow than you were today? Have you underwent any radical changes in your life where you look back years ago and go, wow, I can't believe I was like that? Comment below. And please, don't forget to subscribe and share this video. Thank you.